If you were to look back at the ancient Greek philosophers, you would find that they articulated four components of human character. Justice, temperance, wisdom, and courage. In the first century, there were three more of these virtues, we'll call them elements as I said before, added to the list. Hope, love, and faith. We put faith in the middle. I don't mean spirituality, I don't mean religion. I mean that capacity of a human being to unwaveringly believe in something they can't rationally prove. It's the mechanism upon which beliefs are formed. We're going to take a look at each one of these character elements. And the first one of those is faith. Now I have to tell you, I love talking about this particular subject, especially in audiences that maybe have public sector or business orientation because there's almost a visible tightening of the lips, right? When somebody puts up on the screen the word faith. What I am suggesting is that human beings are unique among the creatures of the earth in our capacity, an innate capacity, to unwaveringly believe in something we cannot rationally prove. That you make a conscious choice about those beliefs because those are gonna give rise to how the rest of these elements of character play out and quite frankly will give rise to the type of leader you will become. Just like this is where a leader's ethics, their morality plays out, right? This is the place where we do the right thing, right? Just because we should. Justice, doing what is right when it's difficult and costly, leading in a selfless manner and fostering a personal and team accountability because justice demands, right, that people be accountable for their actions. And yet a leader who leads from this source of character will be much admired. Now, how many of you used temperance in a sentence this week? Anybody? We're talking about leaders who demonstrate significant passion for a particular subject and yet at the same time seem to demonstrate what was in the definition to begin with, that inhibitory control of one's instinctive impulses. Have you ever been tempted to come across the table at somebody and then retracted from that? This is a, don't take yourself so seriously, but take the role, take the job seriously. Self-control. Those two things don't seem like they go together, do they? Passion and self-control. And yet what it turns out is that's a very compelling leadership model. And human beings actually fail to live or they, they die without hope. Napoleon said that a leader is a dealer in hope. I love that image. Uh, an understanding of the reality of our present circumstances and yet never losing sight of the vision of the future. Pragmatism with vision. Pragmatism with vision. That is a compelling leadership quality. Who's the wisest person you know? Think for just a moment. Sometimes it's your grandson, and how come? What makes him wise? Yes, that un unvarnished view of the circumstances <laughs> that the adults have got all these complexities built around and the kids go, no, really, it's just like this, isn't it? You've heard the phrase, they have 20 years of experience, right? And sometimes that's just person with one year's experience 20 times. Those aren't the people we're talking about emulating here, right? We're talking about the person who over a 20, 30, 40, 50 year career 75, 85 year life somehow has been able to retain those experiences and can see the connection between what happened in the past and what's happening now and provide that wisdom. This is that intense concern for people as the object of your leadership. Leadership is a people pursuit, correct? We manage things but we lead people. So whenever we're talking about leadership we're talking about people. You will need to learn to love people, and I don't mean individual, I mean collective. You better like working with these messy individuals who don't go in straight lines, who represent all the obstacles to your organization's success and all the opportunities for your organization's success. So if you're going to successfully lead people, I'm going to suggest to you that inside your character you have to love them, even, to, to your point, even if you're not terribly skilled at demonstrating that, heavens, we can teach you that. Right? We can teach you how to do that. If you've got this going for you, then you're in good shape. This is one of my favorite elements, and we talked about it, came up in the, in the illustrations you gave earlier of strong character. Courage, that quality of mind which enables one to encounter danger, difficulties with firmness, valor, and boldness. I lead by boldly seizing opportunities and firmly dealing 
with challenges. Now, courage is not the absence of fear. Will people 30 or 40 or 50 years from now be in a classroom using you or something you were involved in as the example of how to do things? Because that's, that's the legacy we're looking for from our lives, from our leadership. Right? We'll only achieve that if we develop our leadership from the inside out based on our character, those seven elements. Faith, justice, temperance, hope, wisdom, love, and courage.